everybody, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. Here's a peek of the finished page. I absolutely love it. I'm using a favorite color scheme. It is bright aqua green and quidacridone magenta. I do add in some dioxazine purple and then white and black. I am mixing these colors right on the page because I know that bright aqua and the and the magenta are going to make a lovely purple lilac shade. And since I know I'm going to be using a lilac stencil here, I want to create the colors that I associate with lilacs in my background. The lilacs themselves are not going to be this color, but it's a trick of the eye. So I'm putting on the paint and building up the color till I get the level and the intensity of color that I want. I'm not too worried because I know I'm going to be putting a lot of visual texture and marks on to this page. So you're not going to see the edges or any of that. So this can be just completely messy. And here are the mark makers that I'm using today. It's embroidery mesh, shelf liner, and a trivet. So this is the trivet. And when I turned it over in the store, it has this lovely honeycomb pattern. And you can see that it is a absolutely wonderful stamp. So I'm just rubbing the acrylic paint over top with a makeup sponge and then stamping down. So for the cost of, well, this one was a little pricey, you know, three, four dollars. I have a wonderful stamp and it's silicone. It comes, it washes off really, really easy. Because I'm using a floral stencil. I chose to keep my background. I wanted some interest there, but I didn't want to have any specific pattern. So this embroidery mesh, I'm putting paint on it and pressing it down. Now, if I had taken the time, I could have taken out my gel plate, put the paint onto the gel plate and used it as a stamp pad with the acrylic paint. And that would be another way to get the paint onto these mark makers. I'm just using the two colors, and that this is where I believe I get into the dioxazine purple to add another third contrast color. Now, normally you see me adding white to the background. I am deliberately not putting white here because I'm going to stencil the lilacs in white. Otherwise, I definitely would have been adding white with my mark makers at this point if I was doing a different kind of background. But I knew where I was going with this one and the focal point. I've been really attracted to the bright colors. Oh, look at that lovely background. And those guys, dollar store, Mark makers. You can't get better stamps than that. So go check out your dollar store and get some fines. So I'm giving this a dry. The paint is quite thick in some places, and so it's actually added texture to this background. And I just, I love this background, these colors. They just, in my happy place. So here I've gotten Reach for the Dioxazine Purple. I just needed a little bit of darker and I'm using the shelf liner. And this one makes little dots. And I just want some interesting background. Not a lot of this background is going to show. Now here's the stencil, the lilac, and I stenciled it with black just to get the placement. This is a new stencil in, from winter 2020. And I am going to stencil this with white paint. 
But when you look at this, you, I'm seeing the lilacs as being the color of, that's in the background, that purple shade. But I, I've been really enjoying the black and white with the bright, bold backgrounds. And I wanted to duplicate that with stencils. You often see it with stamps being added as focal image, and I wanted to see if I could do it with a stencil, and I'm pretty happy with the result here. Keep watching, because I'm going to use a stencil in a way that I've never used a stencil before. Now, that back corner, I didn't have some, but I anything there, so I just could, kind of filled that in a little bit. Some of the stencil is more opaque and clear. Some is more faded and I was going for that look as well. So I'm flipping this. I do not want the complete stencil. So when I stencil this corner in, I realize I have two, the focal image is in twos, and usually it would be like to have odds. And I thought, oh, do I want to add another one somewhere? So I actually just broaden the base. I'm building up this stencil. I'm piecing it in and adding just a little bit more and extending it. And you can do that with stencils. You can build it up and make your own bouquet. And it gives a nice layered look. Now this stencil is called Dash V and it has these wonderful motifs. And I thought, oh, what if I use that and put the black on it and make a black border for my page? Actually, I had pulled out several stencils and this will work with many of the stencils that I have. So keep watching because you're going to see me using the stencils to create borders and I absolutely love it. When I started this, I wasn't sure if I was just gonna do the top or bottom. I wasn't 100% sure if I was going to like it. I end up going around the whole thing, even over top of the lilac stenciling. So you know when you're creating and everything just clicks and works together, that's how I'm feeling right now. This is just really working. I am so thrilled to come up with another way to use stencils in yet another way. Because if I can use them in multitude of ways, it's just a good basic investment. And this Dash V stencil, whether it's the 12 inch or the six inch, is a good basic stencil. If you're starting out or if you're looking for a basic, this one is there. And I'll put the name in the description box. In March 2020, a lot of the new release stencils are not yet available on Amazon. But if you go through the TCW Shopify link that's there, you'll be able to find them there. And if you shop through my link, you'll get 5% off. But regardless if you do or not, you'll be a, you'll get the um, the name and the number of it and can source it that way wherever you choose to do so. I absolutely, again, I keep saying this, but I love that black border. Now I'm just edging it a, a little more with the makeup sponge, black paint, like you've seen me doing, and that's just adding another level. It's all working together. When I was growing up, we had lilac, a hedge of lilacs. And every end of May, June, the, the lilacs would bloom in Saskatchewan. And I just, you know, it's just a great childhood memory. 
So that was my inspiration for this page. I'm just using the floating acrylic technique across the top just to edge that with black. And I start to go around the flowers. And I decide that that's just going to be a little too finicky. So you're going to see me put down my brush. In a moment, I could have continued shading this and it works. Yeah, I just wanted to build up a little bit of shadow and interest. But then I grab my Inktense pencils and I grab the indigo blue, I believe. And I'm just putting it in and then using a fine line brush to activate and spread and shade. And I'm just building it up till I like what I see. Just adding a little bit of something, something. Then I decide instead of scribbling it on, I'm just wetting the brush or the, the ink tense pencil and just applying the color. And that actually goes quite, goes faster, and I like the effect better. I like using the ink tense blocks as opposed to a Stabilo L pencil, because the ink tense blocks will be permanent when dry. So I go and I do some searching for spring flower uh, quotes, and I come across this one, where flowers bloom, so does hope. And hope is my word. Um, it's just one of those words that really resonates with me. And so I, that's why, again, I chose it. And I kind of separated it so it goes across. And you, it makes your eye travel from the top left to the bottom right. Just going to adhere this with fluid matte medium. The font I picked is fairly bold and there's it's dark and because there's white in the lilacs I was okay with there being white in the sentiment. I think it works all really well together. So once I dry that, I grab, actually this time I grab my charcoal pan and pen, pencil, woodless charcoal pencil, and I'm just outlining it in black to tie in the black in the border. Also, having the rectangles with the sentiment reads really well with the border that I put on there. Taking off the tape. Of course, I always take it off too soon. Then I go back and I'm adding some charcoal in there just to darken up the edges a little bit more to frame the page. There are lots of close-ups of the picture. Give me a thumbs up. Share with your creative friends. Please, please, please leave me a comment below. I answer every comment that I get. Thank you so much for joining me in my art journaling mixed media journey. Now go get creative.